If we're going to make a walking animation, we're going to need a character that's going to walk. So let's go into Blender and quickly make a character that's going to walk. So let me add a cube and then go to edit mode. And let's see, this is the front, this is the back. So this is the front of my character. So let's cut him in half. We'll work on one half of the character, him or her. And then we will have the other side be a mirror. So I have that selected. And then here, you just select half of it and then delete the vertices and then use the mirror modifier. Okay, to get two sides. All right, so now we cut them in half. Now let's do some loop cuts here because we're gonna have to have a space for the legs and we're gonna have to have the arms. Let's see, a shoulder and then some arms, and then a waist, then up here a head. Okay, so now the arms, let's give out some things like that. All right, so let's see, down here, um, let's use extrude to extrude out legs. So face select mode, select this panel here, and then E to extrude down some legs, then the knees, then calf, and then the foot. And then since that's the foot, you select the front face, press E, and drag out like a foot. Now we're here for the arms, let's select the side, and let's have some shoulders, and then the biceps, elbow, triceps, hand. I know everything's real blocky, it's okay. Now here a neck, and then from the neck, Let's take out the bottom of the neck and then a head. All right, so when I said the head, I'm going to select these faces here, all right, and then I'm going to expand them. And that's not looking right because I have to turn on clipping. There we go, clipping. There we go. And try to make a head. And, you know, I'm just making a humanoid character. I know. I know he looks horrible. Okay. <laughs> um, let me see. I can try to make him look a little bit better because he is too wide. I'm trying to narrow him down. Narrow down the legs. I'll try to... Expand up, look at this part. Try to expand up, and the arms are really too wide, so let's. And just some quick, dirty work here. And I can see the forearms thinner than the biceps. Just something, something, something. Let's see how that looks. Alright, Tatsuman is gonna have the joints to bend. Um, maybe his body could be a little bit longer in case he does any bending here in the waist. So. And if I move that up, then his waist is moving up, so select this, and move that up. There, so his body's longer. There, that matches up a little bit better. So there, I got my man shape, uh, but let me apply the mirror. So go to object mode, and then apply. So now I got all this, let's see what the scaling is here. Okay, it's all still a 1. Alright, cool. So, um, one thing, do you want to put some textures on here, some colors? Yeah, let's do that. Alright, I, I need a palette to do the coloring, or I'm going to use a palette to do the coloring, so... Palette. Let's get a palette image and let's uh, say 64 colors. So I need to do this one's nice and square. Do, 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 do. So I'll pick a palette, you know, something like Minecraft. All right. So let's get this download, save image as, and let's just put it on my desktop here. 64 color palette, and that's going to be a PNG file to my desktop. Save. Okay. So. There it is, right? So now let's go to UV editing. Let's look at the color material, material, say a new material. And then down here for base color, I'll say use an image texture. And then I'll open up that desktop color palette that I downloaded. There you go. And it looks like it already kind of mapped something on them. But let's say UV, smart UV project. Oh, wait, let's go to face mode. Select all the faces. UV, smart UV project. Okay. So by default, here's all the mappings. Let's put them all into one color. So on this side, I click, press A to select it all, and I'm gonna scale it all down. Okay, so let's say that the color by default we're gonna put on here is um, like blue jeans. Okay, this blue, all right? So blue is the default color, but then say for his shoes, we'll give a different color. So let's just select those shoes, transparency on, select all the way through. What, okay, I'm missing this, have it on the back. All right, so those are the, faces for the shoes and then I can change the shoes to a color you see like white color for sneakers and then the shirt we could do that as a color so let us just select everything that would be the shirt all this stuff would be the shirt now I could give a shirt a different color I think it's going to be orange oh I did forget the top of the shirt let's see boom 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 and put that into our um brown up here like that okay good now for his um face and hands so select the head and maybe look straight on select the hand and select the other hand i'm holding down the shift key and now i'll pick the color for that let's just give a nice fleshy color all right so we got that now i guess i can make him have hair hmm 
I may need to add another loop cut here. So let's see. Select the faces for the hair. Okay, let's say that's his head. And let's give him hair in the front too. And we'll give him brown hair. Dark brown hair. Or it could be black hair. Okay. So there we go. We got like a little person and the person's all textured. Yay. Let's go back to modeling mode and we could see it here with the textures on it. So let me just export that again. Export FBX now because it has a UV mapping. Walker to my desktop. Minimize that. Now we're going to want to take the, the little walker model and the palette and let's zip them together into one file. So we will say send to compressed zip folder and we'll call it walker zip. And you say, why are, you, why are you zipping it up like that into one file? I'm zipping it up in the one file so I can use it in Mixmo. Because now I'm going to take that model, Mixmo.com, or just say Mixmo, enter, and I'm going to go to Mixmo where I could get some rigging done and the rigging will be done automatically. And what I mean with rigging is the, the little mesh of a man is going to have bones automatically entered in there. All right, so we come here to the Mixamo, which Mixamo, they also had their own characters. But, you know, we're seeing how to do everything for ourselves. So I say upload character, drag and drop the walker.zip. So the reason I made a zip is because I'll have the um, texture and the model together. All right, so we're going to do the rigging. So we're going to have to tell Mixamo where the different parts of the body are. And after we do that, um, we don't have this, this kind of skeleton, so we don't have any fingers, so pick that so that the rigging is like simpler and say next. And now Mixamo is automatically adding bones into the mesh. Mixamo can only do this for like humanoid two-legged characters. So if you wanted to do dinosaurs or bears or something like that or monsters and stuff, you're gonna, you may have to make your own rigging in Blender. So there's the model. And it's showing them with an animation already. Cool. So probably the first thing I want to do is download a version of the character with the bones rigged in. So I'm going to say download. And I'm going to use this for Unity, FBX for Unity. And it's the model in the T-Pose. So I'll say download that. It's going to ask me for the file name. And here I have Walker, but I'll just call this one Walker Rigged with the bones in it. Okay. So that's my model with the bones in it that I could use in Unity. And now I could look for some animations. So usually you have like an idle animation. So I'm going to search for idles. Um animation. See, I have my walker rigged. Now I'm going to download this. And this one with the skin would mean like I have the mesh, the mesh part, but I already have the mesh with the T-pose. So I'm going to, you know, just get it without the skin since I already have the walker rigged. And I'll say download this and it's walker breathing. So I'll say save to my desktop and I'll put it right there. Let's look for some running animations. So the running animation has a root motion that's applied in the animation, but I could just see how it looks in place. Now the speed of the animations, I don't have to worry about that much because, well, I could, what's this overdrive do for this run? Oh, see, so he does move faster. So how do I want it? I want it like about that. So I can say download this for a run. Do, 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 do. Same thing without skin for Unity FBX. And for the name there, and I'll just put it on my desktop. Save. All right, so we're done with this Mixamo part. Now we just need a project in Unity that we're going to be bringing all this stuff into. So let's go ahead and open up a new Unity project. Mm -hmm. So we'll say new project. We'll give it a name, walking animation. And it's going to be a 3D project, create project. And let's maximize. Well, before I maximize this, let me get my files. I'm going to need the palette, and then I'm going to need the walker rig the bones from Mixamo and then the idle animation. Uh oh, where's my run animation? Oh, it's over here. I dragged that in there too. So I got two animations, walk and run. Now I could go into Unity. Let's put a floor to walk on. So we'll just make a cube and we'll make it bigger like 10 by 10 and zoom in on that. And then we could drag the walker. Ooh, he's huge. Yeah, we weren't expecting that. <laughs> so I'll probably make him a little smaller. All right, scale him down. He's big. He's a big boy. So if we look at this walker in the T-pose, what's inside there? We have the model, and we have these two animations, idle and running. So if we want to see the model play an animation, we're going to have to use an animation controller. So I'm going to create an animation controller, an animator controller. And then I'm going to double click on it. And here is the animator controller. And this is where we could put our animations. And here's how we could flow from one animation to another. So the first animation I drag in there, the idle animation, that is going to be the default animation. It's orange and it should play, but we want it to play over and over and over. So let's click on it and there should be something where we could say if it loops or not. So I click on the animation itself in the assets window and then on the animation tab, there is here looping. So loop so it plays over and over. Same thing. I'm going to click on the run animation, see Walker running on the animation tab and say looping. So it loops over and over. So I just made sure with these two animations here, if there was an animation in here, 
then I could have right clicked and said control D to get the animation outside of the FBX. The first one I drag in becomes the default animation and the second animation I drag in here I'm at the give it some instructions on when to go to this animation. The instructions on when to go to this animation, I could just make a transition that goes from this animation to this one. And then I can make a transition that goes from that animation back to this one. Now, um, when do I go from one animation to another? I'm gonna use parameters. So here in the animator window, the parameter tab, um, there's no parameters, but I'm gonna add some. So I'm gonna add a Boolean parameter, a bool. And I'll call it is running. How about that? Is running is I'm gonna call it. And this is running parameter, I'm gonna put it on this transition. So I'm gonna select the transition, it turns blue, and then here in the side, it shows the transition. So does the transition have an exit time? No, it's gonna exit right when I, t I change the parameter. So I'll unclick has exit time, and then here in the conditions, I'll say when the parameter is running it is true. So I just added a condition. And then I'll click this arrow that comes back to the idle. I'll come back to the idle as with no exit time, and I'll do it as soon as is running is false. So let me move this window down here so we could see this in action. There you go. All right, so I moved the window down. So here is the walker, and then in the assets, let's put the new animator on. Do I put it on this, or do I put it on this with the mesh renderer? Hmm, I'm not sure. Let's put it on the walker, on the parent. Now I'm gonna press play. Okay, so as you can see, it's playing the walk animation. Now let me look at my animator window here. See the little blue line? That's the breathing animation playing. And as soon as it goes through all its frames, it loops because I said loop on it. Now wherever this is, if I press is running, it switches and he does the running. And then if I uncheck is running, he goes back to the idle. I know the animator controller works. Now I just want to make a script. And I guess I also want the uh, player to drop to the floor, right? Because he's like just floating in the air like that. So let me just select the cube here. This is the mesh part. And on this mesh, let me add a let me add a capsule collider. Okay, and you can see a little bit there the outline in green of the capsule collider. And it's a little the radius is a little bit too much, so let me just narrow down the radius. And let's see at the bottom there of the feet. Let me change the height a little. And the reason I pick a capsule collider is because a capsule collider has a nice rounded bottom, so that if there's little bumps and hills, it doesn't get stuck. All right, so now there's a collider on this here and it fits the mesh and I just should have a rigid body. And should I put the rigid body here or should I put it up at the parent level? Let's put it here where the collider is. Okay, so I'll add a component, physics, rigid body. Now it is a, a capsule collider, so it's round at the bottom, right? So he may like tilt over. So on the rigid body, I'm gonna put some constraints that he doesn't tip over by, he doesn't rotate on this or this axis. And the other thing I'll do is, um, so he doesn't go spinning around when he hits something, I'm gonna put some angular drag on there. And I'll also put some drag on there in case he gets hit. That it's not like he's in outer space and just floating away. All right, so when it starts off, he's off the ground. But when he, I press play, he should drop to the ground. And he's not dropping to the ground. So maybe I have to put the rigid body on the parent object. So let me just remove it from here, go up to the parent, and add physics rigid body to the parent object. I'll put my things there so he doesn't go spinning around. And I'll restrain rotation on the X and the Y so he doesn't fall down. He doesn't fall over. Save. And now let me try to press play and see if he drops to the ground. There, now he drops to the ground. And he's playing that one animation. So now to control the animation and to move him, I'll just make a simple script. So let me create a C-sharp script for walking. I'll just call it the walking script. And let me, okay, let me put the script here at the parent level of walker. And let's edit the script. Let me just cut this out and this out. All right, so let me start off with public float his move speed. By default, will be one. And public float his turn speed. And by default, that's in angles. So I'll say 90. I'll have to do a start. Private start. So private void start. Start is a method of model behavior. This runs once when the game starts. I will get a... What will I get? Nothing. <laughs> I don't think I'll have to get anything. But in private void update, this is where he's going to move around. This update runs every time there's a frame in the game that passes. So let me read some input from the keyboard. So float vert equals input manager dot get axis vertical. That's a value from minus one to one. Float horizontal equals input dot get axis horizontal. And this would be like the um, arrow keys or it's the WASD keys. 
And the values for this, they go from minus one to zero to one. So now from those values, I could do movement. So for vert, I'll do forward movement, all right? So if vert is greater than zero, that means I'm pressing to move forward. Then I'll say this dot, this is the game object. This dot transform dot translate vector three dot forward times move speed times time dot delta time. For moving side to side, I will just do this dot transform dot rotate um rotate on the on the up axis vector three dot up that's like coming out the top of the head so he's turning left and right and how much to turn it will be turn speed horizontal times turn speed oh and over here i forgot to do vert times move speed hmm. so i don't even need this if because vert could be zero sorry i made a mistake i could fix that let me cut and paste yeah because if, if vert is zero he's not going to move forward the vert is one will move forward, the vert is minus one will move backward. All right. So same thing here. If um, rotate, if the horizontal is minus one, it'll turn to the left. If horizontal is plus one, it'll turn to the right. Times time dot delta time. And I put time dot delta time, so it's the same movement speed on every computer. So this should turn him and move him. And it's not doing anything with the animations yet, but let's see if that works with turning and moving. Okay, and I can move forward, backward and I could turn left and right. All right, so now we just gotta do the animations. Now that's what I need, I need an animator. So here I'm gonna need a private animator, and I'll call it anim equal no. I need a reference to the animator controller, okay? I need a reference to this control component right here. So here I'll say that anim equals this dot get component animator. Boom, boom, okay? So that way, here with the movement, so this is moving the character, now I gotta figure out which animation to play. If vert is greater than zero, then I'll play the um, anim dot set bool, ooh, set bool, and what did I call it? I called it um, is running. Remember the parameter we made in the animator? And I'll set it to true, so that he'll run. Else, if vert equals zero, then the anim dot set bool is running is gonna equal false. So he doesn't play the run animation. Okay, so let's see. Let's go back to Unity, which is thinking. Stop thinking, Unity. Press play. Drops to the floor, and I run. And I go backwards, and I run. I think he can move a little faster. So let's make the move speed a little bit more, like three. Okay, so I just change it to three in the inspector window. So I run, and that looks like better speed. I run, and I think I could turn faster too. So let's make this one. 45 maybe for turning. I run and I could turn. So I like it. I like it. Now I, I changed these values when I was in play mode. So I'm going to have to put them there now. 3 and 145. File. Save. And maybe for you guys when you put the script on your thing, let's make it 3 and 145 by the default values too on the script. So there, now he moves and he runs. Now there's only one thing. When he goes backwards, wouldn't it be nice if he could run backwards? So let's look at the animator controller again. All right. Um, over here on the animator controller, here's the running animation, and there should be something here, the speed, how fast the animation plays. If I turn the speed to a minus one, and then I press play, let's see which direction the running happens, because if one is forward, and the more, yeah, he's running backwards, the animation's playing backwards. So somehow I want to be able to change this value from inside my script. So let's see if I can just change it. This is speed, right? So over here, forward, and I can say anim that speed. Yeah, but then I don't know which speed it is. It, there's different animations, right? So I think there's another way to do this. Um, here, I could add another parameter, because here I have the is running bool parameter. I'm going to add a float parameter, and I'll call it running speed. And by default, I guess it is going to be a 1. Then on the running animation, I could use a multiplier, whatever, the speed 1. I could multiply it by a parameter, and the parameter I'm going to multiply it by is running speed, which I spelled wrong. Let me spell that right. Take out the O, running speed. So this is a 1, and if it's a 1, then it's forward. If it's a minus 1, then it'll go backward, all right? That's what I'm thinking. So over here, we'll say anim.set float running speed. And over here, we'll set it to 1. And then if it's not moving, then it's nothing. Then I guess we could put in a condition here for going backwards. Else, if vert is less than 0, then we'll do the same thing. We'll play the running animation copy but we'll set the running speed to minus one to go backwards so let's save and let's see if that works let's see if that works go back to unity press play so i drop i can move forward he runs forward i move backward and he runs backward yes so with the speed i can control which way the animation plays for running forward and then backward and that concludes the tutorial the tutorial the tutorial the tutorial is concluded